All right, welcome to another episode of the Courtside Podcast. I'm your host, Fui, as always, joined by my uh, co-host, Mr. Besu from Besu Customs. And today we have a super special guest on the podcast, the man of the hour, the man that everybody uh, wants to hear from, okay? The GM, owner, coach, player, whatever you want to call him, from Rusty Buckets 2.0. Welcome to the podcast, Chris Cortez, a.k.a. Baby J., Thank you for joining us today. Thank you. Thank you for having me. So, um, you know, obviously we have you on not only to talk about the organization and what you've uh, been able to build at Courtside, but um, the main topic of discussion at Courtside, not just uh, teams, players in your division, everybody in the league is about the miraculous comeback that you guys had on what, Tuesday? Monday. Monday. Monday night. Okay against pandemic it was a game that me and uh besu were in attendance for all right shout out to pandemic as well because i think they're a hell of a team and a team that's on the come up uh at courts had a bunch of young guys but those guys are going to be a force to be reckoned with for seasons to come definitely Um, guys are tough man super tough and man they were dominating the game yeah they were all the way to the last we play 40 minute games here 39 minutes they were in complete control First off, as we were prepping for this podcast, Besu made a good point that he'll elaborate on the amazing job that you did as a coach. And what we think you did best was that you never lost your composure and you kept coaching to the end with the same intensity, with the same positivity. And I think that rubbed off on your team. What were you thinking as the game was going on? Like, did you think that you guys had this comeback in you or what? Honestly, man, I really didn't think that. They were as tough as they they are, you know. That team is really tough. Um, Got to give it to those guys. Um, those guys played really a hell of a game. Um, but um, yeah, you know, never give up. It's always the mentality in basketball. I think, you know, um, playing to the last second. You know what I mean? And when it got to a minute and twenty seconds, uh, I think uh, we went to the free throw line, and I got Chris and Jason to come over to the sideline, and um, I told them the game plan is, you know, start fouling. You know, I saw a little weakness on, I think his name is Jewel, I'm not yeah. sure, on the free throw. Uh, so I, I, I asked uh, Jason to start fouling him. Chris actually went and fouled him in. So we started playing a free throw game. And from there on, you know, they just kept on making mistakes, shooting himself on the foot. Because uh, it wasn't just the free throw. It actually it got down to them making a few mistakes in the end. Um, you know, and, um, you know, basically the technical as well. They didn't know how many timeouts they had. That's something that that I think that we have experience in uh, at Corsair because we we've been here 11 season I think it is. Um, so yeah, I mean you gotta have you gotta know really uh, how many timeout you have during the game and if you're gonna do a, a a challenge, you know if you're gonna be able to win that challenge because you don't want to waste a timeout on that. Um, definitely they wasted a timeout on the on that on on the challenge in that that play. Um, it was a foul instead of them get, trying to get the ball. You know, I think Jeff called a foul on that last play. And, you know, it gave us, uh, I think we were down 71 to 75. Jason went to the free throw line, uh, made one out of the two. Uh, they went and inbounded the ball. And basically when they went to inbound the ball, we, we put pressure on them. They made a mistake. They wanted the foot hit the sideline. We got the ball back and back to the free throw line. You know what I mean? And we made one out of two again. Um, I think it was that, and then um, in the end, I think it was basically uh, they missed a shot, and we came back over on the, on the other side, and we made um, uh, Kovas yeah. got the, a nice little layup up there. Uh, yeah, man, you hit a lot of great points. Uh, I know that you play in other divisions. In this in this division, you're like the coach. You're like the oldest guy on the team, right? Uh, I believe so. I'm. Oh, I don't know how old is Chris, though. Yeah, you got uh, the most experience I see. Yeah. That other team was very young. They didn't have a leader like you on the sidelines coaching them up and really calling these timeouts. I feel like they could have used some big timeouts to really settle the team down. But uh, I really feel like you were very important in that game, okay? Because you made some big timeouts. You got the team together. It, obviously, they're the ones scoring and they're the ones defending, but you really got them together to be the team to not really argue and fight. Um, and, bro, I got to give you your props because it takes it takes somebody like you to really get the team that's – like when you're down 10, 15 points, bro, it's – We got down to 17 points. Seven, it's oh, hard oh. to even play. You're like, bro, there's two minutes left. Some people check out. This game's over. 
But bro, you got them. You made. I left yeah. for sure. I was like, yo, this game's over. I was peacing out because yeah. I was like, yo, there's no way these guys, you can't. I think uh, halftime, um, those guys, uh, we were down, I think, 10 points, and their big guy hit like oh, three, he came four, three, three, three threes pointers. in a row. And I was yeah. like, you know, this is, and it's one of those days, you know, like these guys are hitting everything. Sometimes it's just like that. You're going to yeah. lose. But man, these guys didn't stop fighting, bro. They yeah. didn't stop fighting. So, I mean, I'm going to go right into it, bro. Yeah. Why? Did you take out Kevin? Why did you take him out? Um, nothing personally or nothing that Kevin did wrong. Um, I honestly, you know, um, Kevin should know too. Um, you know, I try to change up the matchup sometimes. Uh, try to do things differently if things, something is not working at the time. Um, and, you know, Kevin just thought that he should be in the court at that time. Um, he was a little frustrated at the time. Um, he came to the sideline and he, he, he was uh, mumbling something to one of the players on the sideline. And, I, you know, I, I was wrong. It was my fault. He was nothing against the team. It was my fault. I went up to him. And I told him, stop acting like a little, you know. And he got upset. He took off his jersey and left. But um, um, we, he, we, we talked it out already. Uh, we, spoke, we spoke with him. The team spoke with him as well. Um, he apologized. He, he realized that he was wrong. It's not his first time that ever he done this at Courtside. I think it's his third time. But it's the first time with us. And, and he knows how I run my teams. Um, I don't have no room for players with egos. Uh, so, but he's, he's a stud, man. He's a great player. Uh, he's, he, he, he's in the team for a reason, you know, our, our, it's not really, really myself that made this run. It was really the team, you know what I mean? So I got to give credit to the team basically, you know? Yeah, of course I, I, I pushed them a little bit, you know, to, to keep on pushing for, for that, that America win, you know? But it was really the, it, to the players, you know what I mean? Got to give credit to the players. And what players need to understand is that you're not always taken out of a game because you did something wrong. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Like, yeah. Kev's obviously a good player, but you went with a different look with Chris Garrido at that time. Yeah. And, uh, and Chris Garrido is an OG, but I think his IQ and the way he managed the game was a huge uh, factor for you guys being able to win that game. But, um, like, at that point, you know, you might have taken out Kev and put him right back in the game. Correct. You know what I'm I saying? Mean, I mean, I, I just wanted to see if Chris could get something going, you know what I mean? He's a bigger guard, you know what I mean? Uh, they were a little quicker, but I felt like he could slow them down a little bit, and he did, you know? He slowed them down a little bit, you know what I mean? And uh, he helped us, you know, definitely get the win, you know what I mean? Yeah, man. I was on the sideline watching the game. They were running a zone. Uh, that zone was killing A, a lot us, of man. people, they play man-to-man, -man, and when you switch them up to a zone... They haven't played it all season, so you're taking bad shots. I was on the sideline like, yo, you got to hit the middle, attack the gaps, but you were just playing the one-on-one -on -one ball, which doesn't work on a zone. If you look at our first-round game, um, they, they actually was playing zone on us as well. And we broke it down, man. We broke that zone, you know, nicely. But these guys were a lot bigger than, than, than the last team, you know what I mean? So it, it actually uh, it was working for them, you know what I mean? And we got to the sideline, and... I think it was Kovas and, and Chris and Jason. We're like, hey, we got to go back to how we played game one, you know? Yeah, man. And and then that's when we started breaking that defense down, you know what I mean? For sure. But so uh, it was it was until the last two minutes, really, that it really we didn't break no defense down because, you know, they were up 15, 17 points the whole game. And I think when we started fouling is when we realized that they had a – they had difficult shooting free throws. So. Yeah, 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 for sure. They had a lot of size. They have good guards. They were deep. They were they were very electric. Yeah. Uh, I mean, I was a I was a teacher to Kevin back in the days in Booker T. So I know him for ten years. I never expected him to do that. I'm never. I mean, now I'm hearing that he's done this before. Yeah, I think he did once with uh, I think with Curtis one time a long time ago. I think like years back. Yeah. Man. And then uh, he did one time in Vets as well. I think. So man. I, but he 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 um he, I think he realized that he was so wrong this time around, and he he felt like he let the team down, especially how. We got that win, you know, in the end. And, um, and you know, he. I don't think he will ever do that again, especially after what you guys did, you know. Yeah, him no, no. IG. We had to put him on blast <laughs> because he's one of the best young guards in the entire league. I yeah. love his game. He talks the shit. Yeah. He could drop could four, back it up, man. four or five threes in a row. He's a big-time player. Yeah. But you can't be emotional. You got to really be a leader because yeah, I mean, he's, I he's got the college experience. Yeah. He's been there before. You can't do this, bro. Not now in the playoffs. Yeah. If it was me... Correct. He will not play with me again, bro. But I mean, hard, you guys man. talked it out. It's hard, you man. guys have a different relationship than me. He's a he's not just a player that I just picked up this season. You know, he's been playing with us before. We've gone to the finals with Kevin. Um, so he's not just any random player. You know what I mean? 
uh, if it was during the season, you know, I, I'm not gonna say that I, I, I will not ben- bench him, and I will not, I will probably not, he will not play next game. But um, definitely in the playoff, man. I mean, I can't tell you he's not gonna be playing, but I, I'm not gonna tell you he is gonna be playing. You know what I mean? We'll, we'll, it's, it's to be continued, basically. At the end of the day, man, you've done a great job with your organization, and. Listen, I'll give you the perspective, obviously, as the owner of the league, and I hear everybody's not only in the comments on IG, but also just talking about it. Like we said, this has been the talk around the league. Everybody should is like, yo, I'll never get Kev back. Me as a player, me personally, like when you play a sport, you know, a game of basketball, you're playing a playoff game, there's going to be adversity, right? Like, Correct. Always. Even what you said, even if you go and say, yo, stop acting like a little bitch, like that's part of the game. Like yeah. from your coach growing up, to your teammates, to your boys, like basketball is a game that that you know it's not easy at times. There's ups and downs. It's like a roller coaster. And if you cannot keep your composure during times of adversity when shit's not going your way, that just shows your character as a player. You know what I mean? So like, um, to me, and and again, you run your organization the way you want to run it. And respect to Kev, it's nothing personal with him. Um, people's perspective is like, yo, you quit on a, on our team. And he's humble now because you guys ended up winning. I'm sure he thought you guys would never win in, in that moment, you know? Yeah. So now it's kind of humbling, like, oh, you know, maybe he changes. We want to see him in this league. We want to see him competing for you, and we respect your decision. But um, so you guys all decided, even as players, like, let's bring him back and give him another opportunity. I mean, you know, like I said, we, we're brothers and friends outside of this league. We right. know Kevin, you know, before this league. And we've played with him also outside of this league. So I think that, you know what I mean, it's only right to just, you know, we all make mistakes. Yeah, yeah, yeah. We're not all perfect. So I think that, like you said, you know, uh, when, is it, when in a basketball game, when, when when things are not going your way, some people could handle it differently than others, you know. And definitely he he didn't handle that the right way. And he understands that. And um, But, you know, going forward, we'll see what happens, you know what I mean. Uh, one thing is that, and my team, man, I, I like to run my team basically different, you know. Like during the season, I give everybody playing time and stuff like that. But when it's playoff time, man, wh- whoever needs to, um, needs to be out there is going to be out there, you know, whatever it takes to win, you know what I mean, at that moment. So it don't matter if you've been playing college ball in the past or not, you know. I don't, I don't even care about when it comes down to that, bro. Yeah, man. I think the best players got to play in the playoffs. It's not time to get your playing time or, yo, I need my minutes. The best players got to play. So I think this might make you guys even better, bro, because Kevin knows these guys are they could win without me. So maybe he humbles himself and he says, damn, I got to play my part the right way, because with him focused, I think you guys could win the entire league, bro, because you guys have height. With Derek and Coas, right? Macho? Yeah. You guys have great guards with Jason and Kevin. Hey, man. Shout Alex. out to Derek, man. Shout out Derek, to Derek. Derek was Derek clutch. Nobody's talking plays. about that. Yo, he hit big free throws to win the game. The charge. The big charge at the end. He was banging with the big guys. You guys have what it takes to win the entire league. This might make you guys even better. Hopefully, Kevin keeps his head on straight and he really focuses because you can't do this again. Like, that's it. Every game is elimination. No, I, I don't think he'll do that again. I definitely not ever again. No, that's it. That's it. Yeah. Hopefully, this was his lesson. And, I mean, he's getting too much smack from everybody in the yeah. league. You can't do that, bro. So, maybe he grows up from this. It makes him a better player. It makes you guys a better team. And, bro, it's it's going to be fun to see the next matchup. Yeah, yeah, definitely, man. Definitely. I mean, whoever it comes next, man, it's going to be tough. You know, we're in the third round, so... You know, nothing's going to be easy from here and on out. So. Yeah, man, and I think we got to implement a rule. I mean, it bothers us as a committee, like, when people show up. And, and it's happened before in the league where other guys do the same thing, where they leave, you know, like, that's childish to us. And sometimes you see guys take off their shoes and there's three minutes left. They got taken out of the game. It's a seven-point game, for example. They'll, like, take off their shoes, put their sandals. Like, one thing we do in this league, right, which, which I think makes the league great, is it's never personal with players like if somebody balls out right has a big game uh a game winner or has been playing great they're gonna get the respect whether it's a highlight video whether it's um you know pictures a shout out on the podcast and the rankings like we show players love and we give them their flowers correct but at the same time if you mess up you do something stupid something childish something embarrassing like 
we're not afraid to put you on blast as well. Yeah, you know, man, and the I, cameras and are I, always watching. Right, right. On YouTube and everything. So. so it's not personal with Kev. I mean, we love Kev. He's a great dude. Been playing here. We respect his game. But whether it's Kev, whether it's me, if I lose it and do something stupid, I'll put myself on blast because that's the fun of it. Like in courtside, you know what right. I mean? Like. The camera's always watching, like it, you said, and we'll expose you and we'll give you uh, love depending on, on what you do. This is the reason why Corsa is one of the best leagues in Miami because you don't get this in other leagues, you know what I mean? You don't get that social media uh, love or whatever, you know, what Kevin did, you know? But, um, yeah, man, this is, this, is, this is the best league. That's why we're here. We appreciate that, man. And Rec West, um, you guys are in the Rec West Championship, okay? Yeah. You'll play the winner between Buckets and Brotherhood and uh, Lunatics, okay? Right. Lunatics is, is a, a team with a lot of firepower led by Elton Walker. We which, see that, man. We see that. Yeah, the elevator, man, gets it done on both ends of the floor. Um, you know, shout out uh, to Max and to, to Juan, and all those guys they got there. I think they have a solid team. And then Buckets and Brotherhood is led by uh, Ray Taylor, uh, B. Trigger, and, you know, they got a pretty deep roster as well. Both of those teams are tough when it comes to to you know obviously you guys are waiting to see the winner of that game we want bucket brotherhood that's who you want yes, okay sir. yes sir because uh we lost to them 20 by a 20 point lead uh it was a sad it was an early game you were shorthanded we i remember shorthanded man none of our players pulled up really it was just me uh jason alex and fernando right and um we went we went at it 20 minutes uh what is it 40 minutes yeah uh, 40 minutes straight man with all substitute and those guys could ball you know what i mean so we couldn't really do much, you know what I mean? So, but and they didn't we, take it we, easy on you guys no, no, either. No, like no. they, they, right. they were having fun. They were smiling. They were, you know what I'm saying? So, I got, I got respect for the guy that runs that team. Jordan right? Ortega, yeah, yeah. yeah. Shout out to him. Yeah. But you want your revenge on them? Oh yeah, man. We we feel like we could beat them. Uh, we feel like we could be either the or, but we want Bucket Brotherhood because they beat us by so much, and we didn't have our full team. You know what I mean? So. I think next game we're going to have our full team. So Yeah. I mean, I think either team that wins, that's going to be a hell of a championship game in the Rec West Division, which is a tough division. But, shit, Buckets and Brotherhood being called out, if they take care of business in the semifinal, that's going to be a hell of a matchup. Um, but, but yeah, man, we want to thank you for your time at Courtside Basketball. The amount of winning that you guys have done, the players and the teams that you've been able to put together has been, uh, has been impressive. So respect to you. Um, we look forward to seeing you in the Rec West Championship, maybe King of Rec, um, and, and, and just to see what you guys continue to do at courtside in the seasons to come because you're we, building a dynasty. We should have been in the C League Championship too, man. Yeah, I, yeah, yeah, yeah. But, you know, we felt short. We were, we were shorthanded as well. That game um, got some things going on, so we couldn't pull it up, all of us. But yeah. it's all right. We know we'll, we'll be back next season. We have a good, good team coming. No, back. you guys had a hell of a team. It, it's unfortunate sometimes in playoffs, like – that shit happens where you're missing a guy and the game can't, whatever. But um, at the end of the day, you you had the, the guys to be able to pull it off. You didn't, but I know you guys will be back full force because you guys had a good team. Yeah. And you had Defensive Player of the Year. What was his name? Uh, That is Twin. Twin, yeah, bro. Twin is a hell of a Shout shot blocker. Twin <laughs> was sending it to, to the wall, yeah. Twin was good. You guys had a nice squad, man. Your your organization is heading in the right direction, yeah. so... uh. Uh, good luck to you the rest of this way, and 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 going forward, we'll sh we should have you back on. Uh, if you win that championship, we'll get you back on with that with that gold ring. You can yes, show sir. it off. I got three now. You got three, yeah, yeah. three, and going on four or going on four. Man. Okay, yeah. so three rings, man. That that yeah. shit, he's up there. Yeah, yeah. Roly uh, as the owner just got, uh, yeah, five, and he's owner of the year. But yeah, you're definitely building a a dynasty. I just remember the last question we were gonna ask you. There's Rusty Buckets 2.0. There's Rusty Buckets. Who's the original Rusty Buckets? Who was here first? Why Rusty Buckets 2.0? What's going on there? Because no, nobody understands. So what happened was that I think it was when you built um, that, that league outside of... Elks. Side. Elks League. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, at, so, in the outdoor court. Yeah, correct. Yeah. And we built a team together, you know. Um, I brought Jason on board, you know what I mean? And... Bro, we took off that season and we won the championship. You won it, yeah. That's, but all those guys were my friends, are still my friends. You know what I mean? They're still my friends. I still rock with them, still talk to them every day and stuff like that. But um, they just wanted to do things differently, and I did too, you know what I mean? So I felt like I brought in the championship culture to the team. Right. That's why I stayed with the name um, Rusty Bucket 2.0. So when, so when you guys separated and went in your own direction, 
Who's the one that create? Like, who was the GM of that Elks team? Uh, so it was uh some guy named Jay. Okay. Um, but uh, like I said, like I brought Jason. Without Jason, we would have never won the championship right. that season. Then we went into rec. I brought Ronnie. I brought Juan. I brought Jason again, and I brought all the players. The only two guys that stay on our team from that other team was um basically uh, Lemus, which is I think he's the GM of that team now. Right. And on uh, Jay. But, so um, so they wanted to keep that name, correct. so they brought it back. But you're like, yo, I, I deserve to keep that name as well. Correct. So they kept Rusty Buckets, and you said, you're going to keep Rusty Buckets? We're the better Rusty Buckets. Well, We're Rusty Buckets 2.0. If, if I would have changed the name of the team, you know, I lose everything that I built for, you know, all those championships. Right, know? right, right. I think you have a, a bander out yeah, there. Yeah, 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 yeah. We had Bucket, it for so sure. So you I'm wanted back. to <laughs> keep a piece of that organization because you you had won it yeah did they have a problem with you coming as rusty buckets 2.0 or were they uh, like we did actually uh um one of one of the guys uh um lemus played one of the other guys i think marvin right he joined my team um and they play a one-on-one which for the name i know he's gonna hate me for this one yeah for the name and he lost oh. who lost lemus lost and they were supposed to change their name uh two seasons ago when i remember when we were with jerome yeah yeah that. yeah they were supposed to change their name to another name, and um, they didn't. They didn't. Although Lemus, they lost. And Lemus, yeah, Lemus lost. He never, he didn't keep his word. So, so it's one of two things: either Lemus is gonna confess, and we're gonna change the name Correct. and give you back that rusty buckets, <laughs> or we gotta set up a one-on-one -on -one game here at courtside where we got the stream and he won't do it. He won't do it. He, he know, won't. He, he know won't. what's up. Yeah. yeah. All right. <laughs> Shit. We gotta, but we gotta get to the bottom of it. Someone's gotta keep that rusty buckets. Uh, a uh, name yeah yeah but they, everybody knows i mean everybody around the league knows um yeah yeah, yeah. Know, they know who really runs like those championship team i think three percent has hit me up and let me know as well before right um but um and you know what i mean everybody knows as long as everybody knows i'm okay with that all right yeah to be continued but as well as lemus want to run that one-on-one -on -one, we could you know come on lemus you got called out let's see <laughs> we want to see the original just one rusty buckets no no confusion yeah, yeah so uh yeah lemus we're calling you out man hey thank you for joining us again yes, and uh and thank you for everything you do for the league thank for you sure. for for having me uh, you know i mean appreciate it all right all right thank you guys for tuning in to another episode of the courtside po podcast with baby j and mr basu mr customs peace out